take a few seconds and see if you can read what that says, and once you figure it out, raise your hand. Okay, so now look, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Look around the room. Um, almost everyone has their hands raised, not quite everyone. In fact, it's a lot harder on this screen than like if you're looking at it on a computer. Um, how many of you have seen something like this on social media or online? It's something that gets shared a lot. Um, by the way, for those of you who didn't get it, it says only one third is able to read these letters, like and share if you can. So now all of you have the responsibility to go like and share. <laughs> um, it was clearly more than a third, though, right? And so the point of this is not to you know, prove that that's like mathematically inaccurate, but more just to illustrate um, something that's happening a lot nowadays on social media. Things like this are being shared all the time. It's inaccurate information. Um, this is just kind of silly. You know, no one's feelings are going to be hurt by that. Um, but it's a problem in our world today, especially for millennials. And I think uh, for me it's kind of frustrating um, that so much of this fake stuff is happening. And so I'm going to be talking about um, why we should be careful about what we post on social media to avoid sharing inaccurate information. And nothing I say is going to come as a surprise to anyone. This is probably something we're already all aware of, um, probably aware of the problems, the causes, and the solutions. So this is more just a reminder than anything else. Um, but in the speech, I'm going to talk about the problem of sharing inaccurate information on social media, um, several of the causes, and that's probably where I'm going to spend the majority of my speech, and also what you can do about it. Okay, so what is this problem? I already kind of mentioned it. It doesn't come as a surprise to anyone. Um, let me give you this long quote from Steve Aguirre in his article, Learn What is Plagiarism and How It Corrupts Social Media. It was published on socialnomics.net on April 29, 2015. He says, do you remember times when only experts had a chance to bring their message to the world with the power of media? People used to write to newspapers and magazines to make their opinions published. It's all gone, and now we can all share our views online. Nowadays, you don't have to be in public figures' shoes. The only thing required is internet access. However, the credibility of information presented by non-experts is questionable. So if you lived 100 years ago, um, just the fact that you're not an expert on you know, whatever you're talking about would make your information a little less reliable. But nowadays, you can post anything on social media, and it might get copied and pasted. You know, One of your friends might post it, not giving you the credit, and no one will ever know where it came from. Um, so, again, this is, this is different than what it used to be, and it's a growing problem. Um, it's kind of a two-fold problem. Some of us have a tendency to um, share information that we shouldn't. You know, you might, have, you might want to like and share this post. Um, others of us are like, oh, we would never do that. However, we believe things we shouldn't. Um, maybe, maybe we're not the ones typing it up, but when we're scrolling through our Facebook feed, we're like, ah, that's funny, and you don't realize that it's completely false. Um, so whether you think you're contributing to this problem or not, um, I think we can all agree it's an issue. So what are some of the causes? Um, there are several, and a lot more than I can go into in this speech. But the main one is I think that we tend to have different standards on social media versus, say, in an academic classroom. For example, as you are all writing this speech, um, this persuasive speech, we have guidelines on how we cite our sources. And the reason for that is because um, it needs to be reliable information. If you're standing up here and you want people to believe what you're saying, you have to say, you know, the author and the date and where it came from. That's why we have these rules in our classroom. None of that happens on social media. Um, there's an article from plagiarismtoday.com. It's called The Impact of Social Media on Plagiarism, published on June 4, 2015. It says, on social media, attribution when provided is often just built in. A share or a retweet instantly provides credit to the original source. Beyond that, a link or a brief mention is often enough to complete all moral and social obligations. So any moral or social obligation you have on social media is just, um, you know, just the retweet and the author's name is, is in that. Um, we don't feel like we have the responsibility to go any farther. Um, another cause is that we tend to believe in information that's like gone viral, um, mostly because if everyone else is believing it, then why should we? And I have kind of a funny um, picture to illustrate. Do any of you remember seeing this picture about a year or two ago on social media? They, okay, cool. That's, I thought there would be more people, but not very many. So back when the Powerball had so much money, um, and 
it was like just growing and getting really big. One person thought he could solve the issue of poverty in America by just splitting up the money in the Powerball between everyone in the United States. However, one small problem, he did his math wrong. Not everyone gets $4.33 million, everyone just gets $4.33. And people didn't realize that, and this got millions of shares um, on Facebook before someone was like, hey, that's completely wrong. Um, and again, it kind of bothers me because I love math, but um, even if you don't like, you can agree. This is a silly um, situation, but, and no one's feelings were hurt when the, it got found out that it was a hoax. Um, but that's what happens. We think, oh, 10 of my friends have shared this, so it must be true. And that's a big problem. Um, the third cause is just that we have a hard time distinguishing inaccurate information from accurate information. And there's this article from Business Horizons called Users of the World Unite, the Challenges and Opportunities of Social Media. This is by um, Andrews Kaplan and Michael Hainline. It says, today if an internet user types the name of any leading brand into the Google search, what comes up among the top five results typically includes not only the corporate web page, but also the corresponding entry of the online encyclopedia of Wikipedia and other ads. Um, so when you're trying to sort through information, it's really hard on the internet because there's plenty of ads and things like Wikipedia uh, that come up, you know, and it's, and it's hard to, to fight through that to figure out what's actually accurate. So what is the solution to all this information? Um, again, as I said before, nothing in my speech probably has come as a surprise to any of you. Um, so, what are we going to do? If this solution probably is never going to be fully solved, but we can at least take steps in our own personal life and in the lives of those around us to um, increase our credibility online. Can't speak forever, but you can speak for yourself. Um, so by all means, do not share information if you can't find a credible source. Um, I know it's really hard. You see that inspirational quote, and you're like, ah, oh, it's so perfect, and you just want to share. Um, but if you can't find the author, just don't do it. Um, it's going to be a little bit extra effort, but if you want to increase your credibility, you can do that. And this might not be just a quote, it could also be a link. It could be one of those copy and share if you believe this statuses. I'm not doing this. Um, Emilia Skoba says in her article, is social media creating plagiarism problem on convincementcurrent.com? She says, concerned users of social media can also make sure they give credit where it is due, no matter how much time it takes, and regardless of the formality it imposes on others. I love how she says that, no matter how much time it takes, it might be formal, it might be uncomfortable, but if, when you're sharing something, if you say, hey, this was the author, this was the title, it was posted on this website, it's reliable, if you like actually take the time to write out all that information, it will make you look so much better um, and more credible, and people will respect that. Um, so that's something you can do, and maybe you want to call out your friends who you know are sharing things they shouldn't, that's up to you, I know it's kind of hard. Um, so this is going to cost you some time and effort, but if you believe it's important, then it's worth it. So I guess just to summarize, um, although millennials just have this sort of stereotype that we're, you know, we're sharing things that aren't true online, uh, we can work to stop that. And the point of this speech is not, encouraged you, is not to encourage you to stop posting on social media. It's more just um, to encourage you to think logically and critically about what you're posting. Not only will you be doing your peers a big service, but you also gain a reputation of being intelligent and smart. So to end, uh, I'm going to share my favorite quote of all time. Kind of. I didn't cite this, but there we go. The end. <laughs>